What's up, meatbags? It's the Alpha Imitated, never duplicated Tony TGD, and you're watching a clip from the latest Gabby with Geeks live stream. Now, if you like what you see, like the video, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Now, with that all out of the way, let's get into the latest clip from Gabby with Geeks. Uh, Disco Elysium, I think that's how I spell it. I don't know. Uh, apparently, there's a lawsuit where they're uh, claiming that the CEO illegally was taking majority shares in the studio. Uh, sounds like another uh, Tommy Tellerico situation. You know, CEO just doing whatever he wants. And nobody knowing what's going on. All right, so this comes to us from gameindustry.biz. Uh, via Google, because I am an expert at Google. Google is my friend. Thank Google daily. Uh, Disco Elysium, a lawsuit accuses ZA slash UM CEO of illegally taking majority share in studio. New filing accuses Ilmar Compass of spending 4.8 million. That's euros, right? Yeah, that's euros. In company yeah, funds to yeah, obtain yeah, yeah. majority share. I can never tell what you're all funky symbols, euros, fucking pounds, all that other shit. This is from uh, Danielle Pardis. Yeah, that, that's it's definitely euros. All right. I've never played this game. Have you ever played Disco Elysium? Disco Elysium, no, I haven't. I hear good things about it. Never, never played it. All right, it says, new information regarding a legal battle between partners at Disco Elysium Studio, ZA slash UM, have surfaced, this time surrounding ownership of the IP and misuse of company funds. Oof. The dispute between two parties, one side consists of Disco Elysium creator Robert Kurvitz and Alexander Rostov, who were allegedly forced out of ZA UM last, late last year, and Kaur Kender, executive producer on the game, who left in August. The other half is current ZA slash UM CEO Ilmar Compass and former executive producer Tonis Havel, also an ex-banker convicted of investment fraud in 2015. Wow. So, I mean, I'm sure this guy, Tonis, he's a straight shooter. He did his investment fraud, you know, did his time, came back perfectly normal. Uh, Compass is the largest shareholder in studio ZA slash UM. And Kurvitz, Rostov, and Kender remain partners despite their departures. According to the Estonian Ex Express via PC Gamer, the latest dispute follows the rights to Disco Elysium 2. Four concept sketches, said to be the first look at sequel, were allegedly purchased by shell company Tuktrek, which is controlled by Compass. Uh, the sketches were said to be sold for to the company for one euro and then resold to ZAUM for 4.8 million euro. Wow, so uh, that thing really ballooned. Yeah, that's quite an appreciation. Yeah. 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 That, that's an investment, right? How, how did they think that they were going to get away with that? Right? Like, like at what point were you like, you know what? I'm going to buy this for a dollar. I'm going to sell this to a dollar and then have the company buy it for $4.8 4. No one's going to notice. This sale is just going to go. Right, right under the, the radar. I think that the fact that there's a guy that was uh, convicted of fraud seven years prior probably goes to show you they're not exactly the sharpest tools in the shed. It's true, it's true. Uh, last month, uh, Kurvitz and Rostov made claims in a medium post that the majority stake in the studio was obtained illegally in reference to Trick as a vehicle for Compass and Havel. The pair also claimed that Compass made the 4.8 million euro purchase with money that should have been reserved for the studio and its shareholders to fund the sequel. Wow. So not only not only did they sell the sketches to this company for a dollar, then rebought them for $4.8 million. That $4.8 million was already earmarked to fund the sequel. <laughs> Just straight up robbed it. <laughs> <laughs> it's this money that allegedly enabled Compass to acquire shares from investor Marg... Liname in 2021, making Compass the new mature. Oh my God. Not <laughs> so this it gets even better because not only did he now take the 4.8 million euros that were supposed to be for the sequel, he then took that money and bought shares in the company so that way he could take over the company. 
genius. He used the company's money to buy the company. To buy the company. <laughs> Can't make this up. Uh, the Express reports that uh, Linamal was expected to split his shares among the partners, but made the aforementioned deal instead. Was this game even that good? Like, I mean, I heard some good things, but I, I didn't hear like, oh my God, like game of the year type shit. Yeah, I've heard of it, but I haven't heard. But, I mean, is this it? Is, is this a screenshot? Is it like an isometric top down? Yeah. View game. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't, I don't know much about it. Uh, the story around it seems more interesting than the game itself, though. Yeah. Following this, Rostov and Kurvitz claim that they were demoted initially before discovering via Estonia company registration that control of ZAUM had transferred to Compass. It is said that the intent from there was to sell the company with Microsoft, Tencent, and Amazon reportedly showing interest in the studio. Oh, my God. <laughs> so not only did he buy it, but he was trying to get rid of it. For even more money. <laughs> Is this guy's name Talarico, by any chance. I know. The fucking greed is just off the charts of this. In their own medium post, the pair claimed that after this transaction took place and speculations began internally, they were quickly excluded from daily operations and their employments were terminated. The same thing allegedly happened to Kender, who was allegedly put on leave and then fired in August. Uh, however, Kurvitz remains a minority shareholder and, as creator of Disco Elysium, has the right to block any potential acquisition. So this guy's going to end up in a river somewhere. <laughs> that, that's how the story's going to end. Well, uh, so, especially seeing as how we've discovered it's a form of Soviet state that this place was made. <laughs> yeah. The latest legal battle was lodged by Kender, who claimed in an Estonian lawsuit last month that Compass cheated him out of almost 1 million euro. At Kender's request, the court seized Compass's stake in ZAUM to prevent a sale or transfer of holdings during the proceedings. Uh, Havel is also accused in a lawsuit of following Compass's actions. The filing pointed out that the holder of the IP rights to Disco Elysium is a subsidiary called Yesirinor LTD, which is owned by ZAUM UK. The director of this company is Anu Raymond, who is also reportedly a partner of Havel's. Man, they just... The tentacles on this thing. Kender claims that Havel's involvement is being kept secret because he's 11.2 million euros in debt as a result of his 2015 conviction. Uh, speaking to the Express, uh, Compass denied the existence of a lawsuit against him, and Havel called the allegation completely absurd. Uh, both were shown legal documents by the outlet and did not respond. <laughs> we're not getting sued. Uh, what are these papers, sir, that say you're being sued? Uh, no comment. This, this is complete. This is like fucking uh, Amico Forever levels of Reality denial. Uh, earlier this month, ZAUM issued a statement on GameIndustry.biz claiming the allegations against the studio were, quote, basis claims and falsehoods, and that it was confident it would prevail in court. It also claimed that former ZAUM studio team members were fired for reasons it called, quote, justified, including limit to, limited to no engagement in their responsibilities, creating a toxic work environment, and misconduct towards other employees. Though the company did not accuse any named individuals of any of these behaviors. And we just fired those guys because they were making our job of stealing company money very difficult. Yeah. They, <laughs> they, were stand <laughs> they were standing in the way of our greed and we just had to get rid of them. Uh, ZAUM added that the rumor that our decision to terminate the contracts of these individuals was taken for financial gain is entirely unfounded. Uh, they said as they swam in a sea of European money. It does not in any way reflect the facts. And that is, and that it was a decision that had to be taken for the well being of the collective and all the money that we stole from the company. Uh, man, this is, this is a crazy story. This is like something you would find in like a TV show, a movie. Uh, so, what do you think? How do you think this is going to end up, Finbar? Well, I, think, I think how it's going to end up is that they're going to end up selling the, the, the studio for something in the region of 11.2 million euros to cover that guy's <laughs> debt. And then they're out. Uh, I, I don't know. So far, it looks like they're, they're blocking the sale, but uh, I don't know how the laws are over there, right? Because, you know, Europe is different than the U.S. 
Uh, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure that you can't sell something for a dollar and then turn around and then rebuy it with company money for $4.8 million. Uh, I'm not sure if it's exactly legal over there. I'm pretty sure it probably isn't. No, I mean, they fall under the, the Estonia is under the EU, so fall under EU, EU law. I know it is the Eastern Bloc, but it's still beholden to EU law. So yeah. they're going to jail. Uh, they're going to jail. The company is going to be in shambles. Uh, what's probably going to end up happening is they're going to find out that the $4.8 million is gone, just pff, into the wind. Uh, and sadly, they're probably going to end up having to sell the company to Microsoft or somebody just because they have no money to make a sequel now because uh, these jackasses <laughs> decided to take money out of the company for their own personal use. Uh, greed. It's not just an American concept anymore. Thank you for watching another clip from Gaming with Geeks. And remember, you can catch Gaming with Geeks live every Saturday at 7.05 Central Standard Time. That's right, we go two, three, four hours. Sometimes we go all night and we're always having fun. And if you're looking to see more from the show that this clip was taken from, you can click the link that's on your screen right now, or you can enjoy another video from this channel by clicking the other link. And remember, if you haven't done so, subscribe. Thank you. And as always, love, peace, booty grease. I'm out this bitch.